about to measure what the Poitech suspension is on level ground on the front and the rear. You might hear the uh, neighborhood yard crew outside doing all the medians and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna get to it and I'll uh, film what the measurements are. The rear measurements from the middle of the hub are about 23 and a quarter. It's kind of hard to show you on the tape measure with one hand holding my phone, but. Okay, first thing you wanna do after taking off the wheel is take off the rear shock. I have a video going over the Toy Tech Boss suspension system. In that video, I talk about these rear shocks um, being a little bit too short for what they're actually supposed to be. They no longer send these Boss shocks out. I think they send Bilstein's out now with the kit. So that's why these are on here, but I'm about to remove everything. Um, we're gonna sh start by taking out the shock bolt up here and then a bolt up there and then we're going to use the factory jack to jack off of here and separate the axle from the body so we can get the spring out of here and be sure to remove all the brake lines and anything that might cause any kind of uh, tension if, st if stretched out I might actually remove the uh, the end links here. But, and another thing, I just recently switched over from Ryobi to Milwaukee. This is the mid-torque um, compact, 650 foot-pounds of torque impact. It's definitely, definitely making the job a lot easier. This is a 17 millimeter on this Boss system. I'm assuming it's the factory bolt here, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so if you look, here's just so get your orientation. You can see the bolt head right on top of the frame that the shot goes up into. So this would definitely be much easier with a ratcheting 19 millimeter. I'm not sure if 19 is the um, same head as the uh, factory shocks, but that's what it is, it is on this Toy Tech. Um, you can't really see here. So what I'm doing is I'm just reaching around and I'm putting the wrench, you can see the wrench right there. I'm just placing it, it's kind of blurry, but I can see pretty good from, from here. So I'm looking through, what I'm doing is I'm looking through here. I'm just reaching around and placing this on top. I have a very specific set of vice grips right here, which I'll show you, which I'm clipping on top of here. Once I get the shock out, I'll kind of explain it a little bit better. But I'm looking to see the bolt head through there. Okay, so this is how the Toy Tech sits in there. You can see it sits on this little sleeve right here. The bottom end does. And the bottom end is a 17 mil bolt. And the top end, if you look, I don't know how the other shocks are, but there's like a, almost like two flat faces on here. So you can either get a wrench on there. But what I ended up doing is this is uh, this, this set of vice grips have come in handy more times than once. And this is designed to clip around a stripped bolt head, or let me tighten this up and show you. So I'll just show you like on this bolt head right here. So you see how it clips, it kind of puts pressure on a cylindrical piece. And I've used these for a lot of things, but it came in handy putting it around this and just clipping onto it like that. Let me loosen this back up. See, I just was able to put it around, clamp it down, and then it would, as I would loosen it, the vice grips would turn and kind of uh, press up against the frame and keep the whole body from turning. So I definitely suggest investing in some of these type of vice grips. I've used these plenty of times and these are what I usually go to whenever I need vice grips. So to do this job, get these and get a ratcheting 19 millimeter uh, wrench, unless yours is, a unless your nut is a different size 
than this boss system. It may or may not be, so maybe just test it out. But definitely worth getting both of those tools to make this job a lot quicker. Okay, so I think I had to crank this up a little higher than the video that Josh from First and Offro did because my springs were already longer springs from the uh, Toy Tech suspension lift. So I went ahead and got this off. It's barely able to fit. I think I'm going to have to use uh, my spring compressors for the Dobinson springs. So I'll go ahead and compare the size of these springs to the Dobinson and get to going on it. So yeah, just use the stock jack and crank up on this rubber bushing up here and it separates the axle from the body and then you're able to slide the spring right off. Okay, these are the part numbers. This is, these are the springs that I'm using. They're the progressive Dobinson springs. These are the long travel shocks. And I'm also using some airbags, some Firestone airbags, just to help if I ever load down the back more so than normal. I can level it out still. Here is the comparison. These are upside down because they're flatter on the bottom than they are up here. But these are the springs from the Straight Joe video that First Gen Offroad had. And they look pretty comparable to the uh, old man emu that I got here. I mean, you can see this is a lot thinner gauge metal than this is. And these are progressive as well. So as you put more weight, there's going to be more spring tension and won't just bottom out. But um, it's actually good. I was, I was kind of worried that it was going to be drastically different from an already lifted spring. I actually feel a lot better knowing that these are about the same size current. So these springs are labeled right and left side. I'm not exactly sure if that makes a difference. The first one I brought over here, you can see says right side which is the passenger side so I went and got the other one just to be safe and next thing we want to do since I'm also installing airbags I'm going to be cutting off some of these rings here out of this little bumper so I think I'm gonna leave two most people just leave one but I think I'm gonna leave two just to be safe the instructions say to cut off the rest of the bumper here, except for this upper portion. I think I'm gonna leave this one. I talked to Josh to see what he did from first gen off-road. He did the same thing and he's running these um, airbags as well. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this just with that added cushion right there. So because I already had the longer springs in the back, I think it was a lot easier for me to get the new ones in. In doing so, I basically just, uh, Used the pry bar and kind of grabbed onto the edge of one of the spools and kind of just pulled it up over the lip right here and it worked without too much effort. So I'm going to get the airline into the top of that and then uh, get the shock back on over here. Okay, so in the uh, box of shocks, comes with these four washers here and that washer is going to be sitting right here in between this bushing and then the metal that's it's mounting to in the vehicle is going to be sitting on top of that washer and then the rest of the bushing goes on top of that. Um, the one with the largest opening right, right here is the one that fits the vehicle the best so go ahead and use that one. It fits right into the hole perfectly. Uh, I'm going to show you how to what the sequence is that I'm gonna be mounting these bushings and washers in right now. Okay, so you see right on my thumb right here, that's the washer that I just mentioned. And then it's gonna be the metal part where you see the metal of the vehicle is gonna go where you see the yellow currently right there. And that's gonna go on top. Okay, so what I did here is I compressed the shock is all the way down. I slid on the bottom part of the shock right here and then um, just go ahead and put that on to keep it from coming off and then I slowly let it expand up into the hole up in there and I still I don't have the top bushings on yet I'm gonna put those on now 
the, the bushing or the washer with the shoulder on it goes down towards the, the ground. But once it kind of stopped expanding, I just shook it around a little bit and let the, um, the lip of the washer that's on top of the bushing right up here, just as I shook it around, it kind of centered itself and snugged up into that hole. So now you can see there's no play in the shock itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these on the top. Again, in this orientation, slide it on, I'm gonna tighten it. I'm just gonna hold up this boss shock next to it. And you can see the substantial size difference in, in both of them. So pretty excited about this. Okay, I tightened up the top nut. I actually gave in and went in to uh, my local hardware store. They didn't have this. I went to the closest AutoZone O'Reilly. Neither of them, well, AutoZone didn't have it. O'Reilly had a three-fourths ratcheting wrench, which you can see I etched in 19. 19 millimeter and three-fourths are the same exact size. So luckily they had this. I got this to, to tighten it up and to use on the other side. So all that's left is for me to tighten this nut up, this bolt up right here and rehook the brake line in. And this side is done. Reattach the uh, sway bar. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty soon gonna be getting the extended sway bar links. Back driver's side is done. For those of you who don't know, I'm gonna be actually putting the nut onto this side, but this is the same up here. You can see that the inside of the stud that's coming out is for an Allen key. So you have to stick a wrench on here first and then stick the Allen key in here second to keep the stud from actually spinning because it's basically like a ball joint right here. So as you loosen or tighten this, you gotta hold the stud to keep it from spinning or else you're just gonna keep on spinning and spinning and spinning it as you try to loosen or tighten this. So just a little tip. Just got the other side installed. You can see both sides. I'm gonna see, um, you can see there's quite a bit of space here without the tire on. There's a lot less space with the tire on, but um, I'm expecting that to kind of minimize once I get the rear bumper on. The other side, um, after I got that side in, I drove around the block and I just wanted to measure just really quick. And that side was measuring 25 inches from 23 and a half so it gained about an inch and a half from what i currently had with the bumper i expected to, to drop about an inch after about a week of driving around with the bumper on so um, we'll see what it does after that okay guys it has been a few months with the rear bumper on installed on the sequoia now along with the rear suspension I installed i'm going to go ahead and measure the difference in the height variation in the back from the center of the hub up into the bottom of the fender. So let's go ahead and get to that. You can see it's about 24 and a half inches, which is just perfect for what I was expecting with the weight of the rear bumper on it. I've also since added some sound deadening insulation, which is pretty heavy as well. And uh, yep, just happy with how it turned out. For those of you who don't know, this is uh, Appa from the last airbender. That's what I named my Sequoia. Super reliable, gets me out of tough situations. It's just a great little vehicle. So finally, to end this video, let me get up under here and show you. So there's a few things you still need to do if you're installing these springs and shocks. And you can see that the airbag still does have a little bit of space on the bottom. But if it's weighted down, you know, there's a lot less space to make up the difference with that way. But if you're doing this, there's two things you need to do. One is you need to extend this bump stop, which I have not done because you can torch your shocks if you over compress them. So you need to do that. <clears throat> and second thing is you run the risk of unseating your spring if you're off-roading a whole bunch with these. So, you either need to have a limiting strap that limits the axle travel away from the body. So that way you don't run the risk of unseating the spring from the perch right here. 
or you could have little um, metal uh, spring keepers on the bottom and the top that just keep you know mechanically keep the spring in place so I still need to do those two things on my Sequoia here but if you're planning on doing this you need to kind of factor that in too um, do as I say not as I do you should not really finish this install unless you have those things done so let's look over there you can kind of see a better picture of it over there but other than that I've been very happy with how this turned out it's a great setup I really like the front springs as well I feel like it goes really well together the front sp springs are the stage 2 icon coilovers um, the reason I wanted those is they're rebuildable so you know whenever the time comes for me to rebuild the front end I can do that without having to spend another 2,000 bucks on the setup so yeah uh, this thing has come a long way since I purchased it several years ago it seems like the Sequoia community is getting a lot more popular than it has been in the past few years some things I have in the works I'm going to be installing some new aluminum skid plates from a company I'll have a video out with that soon and a link to all that like always uh, appreciate the support thanks for watching and keep on enjoying life out there thanks again